Welcome to the Transform Training Series. In this training, we will be modeling a simple heat transfer loop. Slides and Medellica solutions for each step covered in this training can be found on the Transform Training GitHub site. Let's get started. Let us first set up our environment by creating a new package. Go to File, New, Package, and we'll give it the name Simple Heat Loop. Push OK. Within that, we will add a new model, and this will be step one. We'll then go to File, Save, and I'll go ahead and save this in my Downloads folder. For the first step, we'll be adding the base components. These are our two pipes, a tank, and a pump, upon which the rest of the model will be based. Go to Transform, Fluid Pipes, and drag in a generic multi-heat transfer surface pipe. You'll rotate it, copy and paste, and flip this other one vertically so the flow direction is pointed down. We'll now add an expansion tank. Go to Fluid, Volumes, Expansion Tank, and then we'll add our pump under Machines, Pump, Simple Mass Flow. We'll flip that one horizontally and then make all the connections for our model. With the base components now added, we shall specify the parameters. But first, let's rename pipe and pipe one. Those aren't very descriptive. Starting with pipe, let's call it the hot lake. And pipe one, we'll call the cold lake. With their names now changed, let's highlight them and modify their geometry. We'll give them four volume nodes each, and then give them a diameter of two inches. Under the initialization tab, we'll initialize them with a one bar, uniformly at 50 degrees Celsius, with a mass flow rate of one kilogram per second. Push OK. There is one more thing that needs to be done with the pipes. If we look closely, there is a white circle and no circle on each of the pipes. It is beyond the scope of this lecture series, but it is important to note that we should not have a white connected to a white or dark connected to a dark if possible. Double click the cold leg, go to advanced, and change the exposed state opposite of what it was. We should now see that white is no longer connected to white and dark is no longer connected to dark. Let's now specify the parameters for the tank. The tank will be a one foot diameter pipe if you recall that's the equation pi r squared go to the initialization tab one bar we'll start it at a level of one meter and once again, initialize it at 50 degrees Celsius. Now, we only have a specific enthalpy here, so we'll have to call the fluid properties. So go tank, medium, specific enthalpy, the lowercase. We can go ahead and delete the X. And go tank.p, start, and 50 plus 273.15. Recall. This right there needs to be in Kelvin, not Celsius. So we have to do that, do that unit conversion ourselves. Push OK. Next, go to the pump. And we'll specify it for one kilogram per second. Finally, highlight all components. And we will set the medium, or the fluid type, to water. So push W if you'd like to scan faster. And we'll look for the one that says recommended for most applications. And push OK. With all of the parameters now specified, let's simulate the model. First, go to Simulation Setup, change the stop time to 10,000 seconds and the number of in intervals to 1,000. Store those in the model, and then simulate. Go to the Simulation tab, and let's plot the temperatures for each of the pipes. We'll 
we'll create a new plot for the cold lake. Next, let's plot the level of the tank. Type in level, and then we'll plot the mass flow rate through the system. We'll choose the inlet to the pump as the location of our probe. And finally, let's look at the pressure of the, of the tank. We can now look at these in, in a better fashion if we tile all these windows. Finally, if this is a plot setup that we'd like to keep, we can add a command. Under the command window, we forgot to change the name, so let's go ahead and organize our command, edit it, and call it plot variables. Push OK. With our basic model all set up, we will now extend it to include heat transfer and other more interesting phenomena. At this point, it'd be good to duplicate our model so that we have something to come back to if we need to. Go to right click, new, duplicate class, and to be consistent with the solution, we'll go ahead and call this step three. Click OK. We'll save it. Go to cold leg and let's now add heat transfer. So turn heat transfer on and use a heat transfer coefficient associated with laminar and turbulent regions. Push OK. We should now have a heat transfer connector. To that, we'll go to transform, heat and mass transfer, boundary conditions, and specify a temperature boundary. We'll use temperature multi. Go into the boundary, and under end ports, this is in reference to the number of volumes upon which the boundary model is being connected to. So we'll go cold leg, geometry, and V. For the boundary condition temperature, We'll go ahead and make it 15 degrees Celsius. We can now go and connect the boundary to the pipe. When you do this, we will get a message box. The first index is referenced to the volume number, which goes from one to four. For the cold leg, we have a second index, which is in reference to the heat transfer surface. For this, Example, we will only be using the first or one heat transfer surface. So we'll click the arrow and make that one. Push OK. Now that we've specified a boundary condition for the cold leg, where heat will transfer from the cold leg to the boundary, let's add heat into the hot leg. For that, double click on the hot leg and go to internal heat generation. Go ahead and click the gray box. Under that, we'll add 10 kilowatts in per volume heat generation and click OK. At this point, we can simulate and see how it changed our model. Now that we've specified heat transfer in our model, a heat transfer coefficient on one end, and a constant heat generation rate on the other end, we're going to replace the heat transfer generation rate with a physics-based approach. Specifically, a nuclear point kinetic model. Make sure we've saved our model and let's go ahead and go to new duplicate and call this step four and save it. Next go to transform nuclear kinetics and add the point kinetics power based model. Once there double click and add in 40 kilowatts to Q nominal. Under kinetics we want one feedback, which is going to be based on the temperature of the hot leg fluid. Its feedback value will be open bracket negative 2.5 e to the negative fifth. Make sure to close the curly bracket. Likewise, here, curly bracket, and I said we we're going to be based on this on this hot leg effective temperature. And there is a predefined variable for that already under summary T effective. And the feedback temperature is going to be 92.67. This was something that was pre-calculated. Push OK. Now that we have the kinetic model set up, we need to go to the hot leg and shift the internal heat generation from the constant value of 10 kilowatts to whatever is returning from the kinetic model. So for that, we will type kinetics, go to Q total, 
And being that this is the entire power sent to the fluid, we need to make sure that we're doing this on a per volume heat generation. So we'll divide by hot leg geometry and then the number of volumes. We'll click OK. And then we will simulate. As we look at our results, there are two distinct regions, beyond 4,000 seconds with steady state condition reached and before 4,000 seconds, particularly at the beginning where we have a spike in values. Now this spike is associated with the temperature feedback. We gave a reference value of 92.67 degrees Celsius, but that was pre-calculated associated with a steady state value. This means at the beginning we have a lot of feedback going into the nuclear kinetics changing the power level. To investigate that theory, we can go ahead and plot the power and the reactivity of the reactor. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll type in Q total, make a new plot. Likewise, we'll look at the reactivity because we think that is what drove the power level. As we look at these, the power level has increased significantly at the beginning, and that's associated with this large reactivity insertion. As things balance out, the reactivity goes to zero and the power returns to the value we expected. Let's go ahead and correct for this. First, let's tile our windows so they look really nice again. Go to modeling, and let's go to kinetics. Here, we're going to do something a little tricky. To get around the spike in temperature, we are going to delay the feedback impact on the model until after the loop has gotten to an approximate steady state. For that, we can go if time is less than 5,000, then we'll do kinetics of vowels feedback. And we'll take the first one. That's this right here. Else, the hot leg effective temperature. Click OK. Now we'll re-simulate. This is a much better result, much more along what we would expect. With nuclear kinetics now added to our system, we will introduce a new concept, trace substances. A trace substance is a substance which exists in small quantities and travels anywhere where the primary fluid flows. In this step, we will generate a trace substance as a function of the power of the reactor, and we will have it diffused through the system to a boundary condition. To begin this next step, we will duplicate our model and call it step five. The first thing we need to do is modify the media indicated extra substance. To do this, we will go to the script side, and define a new media. We will then use the extra properties parameter. of extra properties names. The extra properties names allows us to specify how many trace components or trace substances will be associated with the media. If you notice, there are curly brackets, which indicates that we can add as many trace substances as we deem necessary for our problem. With our media now defined, we will go back to the diagram view and highlight all of our fluid components. Double click and change the media name to what we are just defined, medium in my case. The next thing we will do is add the trace substance generation in the hot leg based on the reactor power. For this, we will go to internal trace generation and under MC Gen. This is, if you notice, the default was an array, so we'll go curly bracket, 1e to the minus 4th times the kinetics power, push OK. On the cold leg side, similar to the heat transfer, we'll turn on mass transfer, specify a mass transfer coefficient, 
We will then click the gray box, specify a diffusion coefficient. We will just give it a value of 1. Under alpha, this is an array, so we will once again give it curly brackets. We'll define it as 1,000. Click OK. We will now need to find a boundary condition. For this, we will go to Transform, Heat and Mass Transfer, Boundary Conditions, Mass, and we'll do the concentration multi. Just, with the, just as with the temperature boundary condition, we'll specify the number of ports as to be associated with the number of volumes of the cold blade geometry. Our number of substances is 1. We wrote tritium under the extra properties names. And we'll leave the default as a zero concentration boundary. Push OK. We'll now connect. As before, we get a dialog box. Once again, the first index is associated with the number of volumes, and the second is the heat transfer surface number. With everything set up, we can now simulate. To see what we just added to our system, let's search for the variable MC. Create a new plot, and we will plot MC in the tank. As you can see, there's a generation as things reach a steady state, but eventually the generation rate equals the rate at which the trace substance is leaving the system through that boundary condition. Up until this point, we have been using a constant mass flow rate associated with what was being specified in our pump. In this step, we will replace the constant mass flow rate with a pump that is driven by pump curves, so we get a variable flow rate. Let us first duplicate our step and create step 6. We will now right click on the pump, click change class, and choose pump control. Double click on the pump, go to the initialization tab, set PA to 1 start and PB start to 1.1, TA start to 50 degrees Celsius and the mass flow rate to 1 kilogram per second. Click OK. Simulate. Our results are significantly different. Why is that? If we look at the flow rate from the pump, we shall see that it is no longer held constant 1 kilogram per second, but instead starts at a value closer to 1.5 and has various oscillations. If we go back to the model, if we double click the pump and scroll to the bottom, we will see an in inputs for control settings and see that currently it is controlled in RPMs. Let's go ahead and switch that to mass flow rate and push OK and re-simulate. Our results are now back to what they were before with a constant mass flow rate of 1 kg per second. Since the mass flow rate is constant, something else must have changed. Let's create a new plot and search for pump. Within the pump component, we will search for the variable n, which stands for the rotational speed of the pump. The rotational speed of the pump changed in accordance with the physics that were occurring in the system, resulting in a constant mass flow rate. Now that we've added a more realistic pump, have heat and mass transfer in our system, we'd like to remove one of the limitations we had included before with the if-then logic. Let's duplicate our step and create step 7. The first thing we'll do is add the PID to our model. Go to Transform, Controls, Lim PID. Double-click the PID controller, switch to PI, and specify KS to 1 over the nominal power of our kinetic model. Do the same with KM. These values will scale the inputs so that they are approximately around 1. We also make our gain 1e e to the minus fifth. 
Next, we will go to the Medallica Standard Library Blocks, Sources, and drag in Real Expression. Connect them and rename them to KS and KM. For KS, we will have this equal to the nominal power of our reactor, or the set point. M, which stands for the measured value, will be set to the actual power from the kinetic model. With our controller now set, we'll go to the kinetic model, go to row input, and set that equal to the output of our controller. Then go ahead and simulate. As we look at these results, we'll notice that everything achieves a steady state much faster. If you recall, at 5,000 seconds, we had an if-then logic. Let's go ahead and remove that, as we no longer need it since we have power control on our reactor. Go to the kinetic model. Under kinetics, go ahead and delete everything before a hot leg summary T effective. Click OK and resimulate. We will now go ahead and shift the heat generation from being deposited directly in the fluid to a two-dimensional heat element, typical of what you might see in a real heat transfer loop. Let us first duplicate our step and create step eight. Double-click the hot leg, turn on heat transfer, and remove the internal heat generation. We will now add the 2D conduction component into the model. Go to Transform, Heat and Mass Transfer, Discretize Models, Dragon Conduction 2D. For this example, we'll just use a planar geometry. Double click your model, go to Geometry, and so specify NX equal to 3 and NY equal to the number of volumes in our hot leg geometry. The length in the x direction will be equal to half an inch. The y direction will be equal to the length of our hot leg pipe. And the z direction will be one inch. Click OK. Change our material to stainless steel 316. Go to the Initialization tab and set TA1 and TA2 start to 50 degrees Celsius. The rest of the defaults will be based on these temperatures. Finally, go to the Advanced tab and expose each of the states to true. As before, we need to be careful how we connect connectors. Double click on the hot leg and let's make sure we turn the heat transfer to laminar turbulent and click OK. The white circle is now gone and we can connect the conduction element to the hot leg pipe, once again choosing the first heat transfer surface. Finally, we need to specify the boundary conditions for the rest of the connectors. For that, we will go to Boundary Conditions, Heat, Adiabatic Multi. Double click and set the number of ports equal to the appropriate dimension of our 2D conduction model. and then connect. You can duplicate this twice, double click these two boundary conditions, and change NY to NX. Finally, we need to connect the power output from the kinetic model into our conduction model. To do that, double click conduction, go to internal heat model, and under QGen, put in the power. 
Just as before in the fluid where we had to divide by the number of volumes, we need to divide by the number of volumes in our conduction model. Connect our boundary conditions. and then simulate the model. To plot one more value, let's go ahead and look at the effective temperature of our conduction model. Our model started down at 50 degrees Celsius, as we had indicated, and heat up rapidly based on the kinetic power, until it eventually reached a steady state value around 450 degrees Celsius. Let's review what we've done in today's lecture. We have modeled a simple heat transfer loop. We first created a base architecture. From there, we specified parameters and checked our model to ensure it simulated correctly. Next, we added heat transfer, including heat generation in the hot leg. We then moved that heat generation in the hot leg into a nuclear kinetic model. Our next step was to add trace substances that would flow around the loop, then swap in a pump model to get more realistic flow dynamics. We then introduced a control system based on the power of the kinetics, and finally, we added 2D heat structures and shifted the heat generation from the hot leg pipe into the conduction model. I highly encourage you to review the lecture, the slides, and to go more in depth into the solutions which have been provided. Thank you for joining me in this lecture. See you next time.